What's good, everybody? My name is Elmer Bapo. I'm a hip hop and R&B artist based in LA, and you may have seen me from some of the videos that Vaklia posts on their page. I'm gonna give you guys an inside look into my settings for FL Studio and Doubler 2, as well as some instruments and sounds that I like to use. I know that Doubler 2 can be a little intimidating when you first get it, but this video should have some helpful tips to fast track your setup and help you get your ideas out faster. First things first, my hardware setup. I'm currently running an MSI gaming laptop with an i7 processor and 32 gigs of RAM. I'm not too tech savvy, but I'm quite sure that I've maxed out what I can run on my computer. I also use a Motu M4 interface with a buffer size that can get as low as 16, but typically I run it at 128. Now onto my doubler setup. I currently use the doubler mic, which is pretty plug and play, and it's pretty straightforward. And I have two main profiles that I use with doubler too. These are based off of how I work in FL Studio. The first setup allows me to control drums directly in the channel rack in FL. So this is how it works. In Doubler, I've set the MIDI output channel to 16. And in FL, I've set my Omni preview MIDI channel to 16. Back in Doubler, I've set the drum pads to MIDI notes C2, D2, E2, F2. This would be G2, A2, B2, so on and so forth. So this lets us control each sample in the channel rack in chronological order. So for example, let's bring in some drum samples. So when I say we can control samples in chronological order on the channel rack, this is what I mean. This first sample is gonna be controlled by this pad. The second sample is gonna be controlled by this pad. And this third sample is gonna be controlled by this one. And all we have to do is train doubler to the sounds that we want to use. So I know there's a kick drum, so I'll probably train it to a beatboxing kick. We'll do a TS sound for this hi-hat. For the snare or clap, we'll do a clap sound. And now you can control all the drums that you set up in the channel rack. And setting it up this way is great because this is how I see most producers actually doing drums in FL. The next profile is similar, but it allows me to use Fruity Layer. In this setup, the drum triggers are set to C3, C sharp 3, D3, D sharp 3, E3, F3, F sharp 3, and G3. The other thing that's really important is just making sure that your MIDI output channel is not set to the same Omni preview channel that you have here. So the Omni preview channel is 16 and in Doubler I just set the MIDI output channel to 1. So what we're going to do is open up Fruity Layer, select all the drums that you want to attach to Fruity Layer and set it as its children, split the children, and if you select the Fruity Layer now, we can control the drums from Fruity Layer. But what I really like about Fruity Layer is I don't even need to know the tempo of the song. If I just have a beat idea in my head, and we'll just try one right now. So we can take what we did and then just stretch it appropriately onto the grid to make sure that it matches the tempo. And so what I'm looking for is just making sure that the claps or the snares, which are gonna be this one, just line up on the grid where they need to. And everything relatively should fall into place as long as you kind of had good rhythm. And of course, if some things weren't to your liking, you can obviously just quantize or just go in and manually adjust whatever it is that you need to adjust. As far as the pitch section, I don't have any special settings. I just make sure that the key is set properly, either by using my ear or using this really cool auto key detect feature. So how this works is you could just sing your melody and Doubler will help you find the key that it's probably in. So for example, and just based off of that little melody that I sang, Doubler's finding that the key is in G sharp major. Another thing I like to do is slide the stickiness slider back and forth while I'm humming an idea just to see which point on the slider captures the performance best. So this is what it might be like. There's a little bit of sliding between the notes, so I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. And 
I don't really touch the input level too much, but I do find that if you're looking to have a more staccato-like performance, it's best to bring the slider over to the left. But if you're having problems catching the softer part of your performance, I would suggest moving the slider over to the right. I know you guys are curious what sounds I like to use. My favorite sounds that I like to use with Dubber 2 are typically the ones that require the least computer processing. Naturally, the more processing your plugin uses, the more latency will be introduced and you may have a harder time picking up the nuances of your performance. I like to use a lot of samples from my bass and 808s. The majority of which I get from Splice. As far as plugins, Octave Deluxe, Scorch, they play really well with Doubler 2 and they're fairly unique sounds. Some of these plugins have my favorite sounds ever. <laughs> Ample Guitar Light is great for an organic guitar sound. And Monster Sax is a great free saxophone plugin. And a lot of the native FL plugins work really well with FL Studio because they're just optimized for FL Studio. So this is an overview of my setup with Doubler 2. And I like to tell everybody Doubler is just like any other instrument. Yes, you're going to have to practice. Yes, you're going to have to figure out how this works within your system. But once you do, it's just another tool in your arsenal that you could use to create more cool stuff.